So how are the rights of journalists protected and how are these rights violated? This segment will focus on the legal means through which that protection and indeed the violation take place. But uh, it goes without saying that governments and other actors use extra legal means to curtail the practice of journalism. But we will return to this extra legal means in uh, a, a, a follow-up uh, segment. The legal means, what are they? The most important one is, again, as with uh, the previous forms uh, of uh, media, the licensing scheme. Some countries require license or accreditation, and these pose significant issues to freedom of expression and information, and indeed to the right of journalists to operate. I'm going to illustrate those problems again with some examples. In Egypt, during the Arab Spring and the Tahrir Square protest, the authorities confiscated press cards and other types of identification and required journalists to acquire accreditation from the Ministry of Information. By so doing, they were preventing journalists from reporting on what was happening in Tahrir Square, or at least from doing that legally. In Zimbabwe, during the 2008 elections, journalists were refused accreditation on the basis that some requests were filed to, and I quote, turn journalists into observers or to smuggle in uninvited observers and security personnel from hostile countries under the guise of the media. Considering the important observatory roles that journalists play in society and in elections in particular, the refusal was of course highly unreasonable. More recently, a court in Uzbekistan heavily fined an independent journalist for operating without a license. I'm, I'm going to highlight a little bit that case. It concerned Saeed Abduramikov, who writes under the pseudonym of Saeed Yanishev. He's an independent Uzbek journalist, and according to the press freedom organization Reporters Without Borders, one of the last such independent journalists in Uzbekistan. He often covers issues related to government corruption. In May 2014, Saeed wrote an article about unfair compensation of residents of Tashkent, the capital city of Uzbekistan, who were forcibly relocated for the purpose of constructing a highway. In June 2014, he was prosecuted and convicted of violating administrative laws prohibiting working without a license and collecting information threatening public security and order. The prosecution used witness testimonies to make its case. The first witness was a reporter from a state TV channel who stated that Said could not be considered a journalist since he was not accredited. Furthermore, the witness claimed that independent journalism did not exist in Uzbekistan and thus only accredited journalists could be called journalists. There were other testimonies which did not identify Saeed as a journalist, for instance, from the State Agency for Media Monitoring. And he was nowhere to be seen either in the uh, official uh, Union of Journalists. So for all those reasons, and without any surprise, the Tashkent court held that the uh, testimonies proved that Said was not a journalist. Furthermore, the court was of the opinion that Said lacked certain standards for objectivity and fact-checking required of journalists, and it imposed a fine of over $4,000 on Said. That's a very heavy fine considering that the average monthly salary in Uzbekistan is between 200 and 400 dollars. The Uzbek decision highlighted the problems of a journalist accreditation regime. If used arbitrarily, and most of them are used arbitrarily, they limit a journalist's ability to work, thus impacting on his or her freedom of expression 
and they also impact on the right of society to receive his information or her information, thus undermining freedom of expression and information altogether. So what do we mean by license or accreditation? It's basically an official permission required before a journalist can start his or her activity. It may take the form of belonging to a professional organization, a state-sanctioned professional organization. In practice, the power to distribute license can become a political tool, and you can see easily in the previous example how this happened. It's used to prevent critical or independent journalists from publishing. And for this reason, and simply because the right to express oneself through the mass media belongs to everyone, irrespective of qualification or moral standing, licensing schemes for media workers are considered to be in breach of the right to freedom of expression. The seminal decision for the question of journalist license is a 1985 case from the Inter-American Court for Human Rights, which is still very relevant and is indeed cited around the world to defend journalists. The case concerned uh, a demand by the government of Costa Rica. It approached the court for an opinion, an advisory opinion on whether journalists could be required to become members of a professional association before they could practice. Costa Rica wanted to put in place such a, a system, but before doing so, uh, ask for the opinion of the Inter-American Court. Costa Rica presented three arguments in favor of its licensing regime. First, that it was necessary for public order. Second, that it was a normal way to regulate professions which would benefit society at large. And third, it would guarantee the independence of journalists in relation to their employers. The Inter-American Court rejected each of these claims. With regard to the first claim, the court did not object to the notion that organizing a profession in an association could facilitate the development of a coherent system of values and principles, and so possibly contribute to public order. But it insisted that protection of freedom of expression constitute the primary and basic element of the public order of a democratic society, which is not con conceivable without free debate and the possibility that dissenting voices be fully heard. It is in the interest of the democratic public order that the right of each individual to express himself or herself freely and that of the society at the world to receive information be scrupulously respected. The court found that licensing by restricting access to the journalist profession was therefore harmful to rather than supportive of public order. And I think it's a very important uh, decision that uh, the court made there, where it talked about democratic public order and the centrality of freedom of expression and the freedom of the journalist to holding that democratic public order in place. With regard to the second claim regarding the regulation of all professions, the court distinguished between journalism and, for instance, the practice of law or medicine. And it said, and I quote, the practice of journalism requires a person to engage in activities that define or embrace the freedom of expression which the Constitution guarantees. This is not true of the practice of law or medicine, for example. The court also dismissed the argument that licensing schemes are necessary to ensure the public's right to be informed by screening out poor journalists. The court felt that such a system would ultimately be counterproductive. And again, I'm going to quote from the court here. General welfare requires the greatest possible amount of information and it is a full exercise of the right of expression that benefits this general welfare. 
a system that controls the right of expression in the name of a supposed guarantee of the correctness and truthfulness of the information that society receives can be the source of great abuse and ultimately violate the right to information that this society has." End of quote. Turning finally to the argument that a licensing scheme would strengthen the profession and thereby help protect media workers against their employer, the court found that this goal could be accomplished through less intrusive means, without the need to restrict the practice of journalism to a limited group. As such, the licensing scheme failed to meet the necessity test. Having rejected the arguments for permitting a licensing scheme for individual journalists, the court concluded unanimously that such scheme constitute a violation of the right to freedom of expression. Other courts, national as well as international, have taken a very similar point of view against the licensing of journalists. The three special mandates, basically they are the uh, international expert that have been appointed for protecting freedom of expression at the United Nations level, at the Inter-American level, and at the level of the OSCE, the Organization of Security and Cooperation for Europe. Those three international experts adopted a joint declaration in 2004 setting out standards related to uh, important freedom of expression issues. In their 2004 declaration, they stated individual journalists should not be required to be licensed or to register for very much the same reason than we have highlighted earlier when reviewing the Inter-American Court decision. This position is also echoed by the Human Rights Committee in its General Comment 34. Here I quote from the General Comment. Journalism is a function shared by a wide range of actors, including professional full-time reporters and analysts, as well as bloggers and others who engage in forms of self-publication in print, on the internet or elsewhere. And general state system of registration or licensing of journalists are incompatible with freedom of expression as a vehicle for transparency and accountability. I have to add here that this quote uh, is uh, particularly important in the context of online expression, where a number of governments have also uh, sought to control uh, bloggers and other online activists by re requiring them to be, uh, to be licensed. But this is something we will uh, consider in next week. So, in conclusion, with regard to the uh, regulation of individual journalists, international standards confirm that journalists should not be the object of a licensing scheme, meaning they should not be forced to be part of uh, an association, state-enforced association. They should not have to register, they should not have to be licensed for the purpose of um, practicing journalism, whether for a newspaper, for the broadcasting, or indeed for an online media. Thank you.